down in Houston, Jessica and Ben and Brody, they were all doing their little competition thing that they had going on, so I'm glad things are going to get back to normal. Nobody's dieting around the house anymore, so I, I, we, can, we can go to the grocery store. Hallelujah. Anyway, my wife wasn't, but uh, my wife, she eats like a bird, so, you know, anyway, so we, things are, everybody gets the grumpies out of the way. You know, when, you, when you're not eating all the good, fun stuff, you, people get a little irritable here and there, you know, so anyway, we're... We're excited about things getting back to normal here for a while. Hallelujah. But uh, I, I'm encouraged this morning uh, as we've been praying, as Pablo was talking about, you know, one of my responsibilities as a pastor is to, is to feed the sheep. And I take that as my number one responsibility. So uh, as we're uh, seeking the Lord about uh, not only the, uh, uh, what you need to hear, but just the overall direction and future of the church. And as we're uh, uh, looking at the signs of the times and... Uh, be, uh, staying aware of, of all that's going on, uh, one of the things that we're aware of is that we have a, we have a responsibility, an ultimate um, commission that, that the church has. And so we, uh, we're working on that right now. We're, we're, we're just reminding you as a congregation of these things. And uh, turning your Bibles over to Exodus this morning to the 40th chapter. Exodus chapter 40. And, uh, you know, as I've been mentioning... Um, as I'm praying, uh, we could talk about, there, there's so much, uh, it, uh, the, the hardest challenge I, I have as a, as a pastor is what exactly we're supposed to teach the people. We could talk about healing, we could talk about righteousness, we could talk about provision, we could talk about books of the Bible, we could talk about people in the Bible, we could talk about leadership, and all the different things, you know, from, from every doctrine. Uh, so, uh, again, I find that as I'm seeking the Lord, and, and, I'm, and I'm reading, I'm listening, uh, looking at things, he begins to uh, send me on. I kind of call it a trail. Uh, things begin to surface. You know, it's kind of like uh, uh, things, be- as you're seeing things, uh, reading something over here, something kind of pops up, and I'm looking over here, and something pops up, and they begin to come together. And so we began a few weeks ago just in directing uh, and encouraging you about our vision and future that we have to, to uh, reach people. I mean, that's why we're here, right? If we're not here to reach people, we might as well just pack it up and go to heaven, right? Uh, and, and, and we need healing. We need healthy bodies. We, we need finances. But again, the ultimate purpose is so we can, we can bless people. We can do what God's called us to do. We can serve and fulfill his plan for our life. I, I've really been stirred just even as I, just in my own time with God about the will of God. How many know the will of God is so important right now? The will of God for your life. God has a plan for our life. And really, his plan revolves, God's plan for every single believer will revolve around his plan for them in the local church. So if you know somebody, if you know a believer that say, well, I, I just don't believe, you know, church is that important. Are you kidding me? We're part of the body of Christ. If you're, if you're not adding of your supply, like Brother Pablo said, if you're not adding your supply to the body, it's like, it's like the finger or the hand saying, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do what I'm supposed to do. But every single person should be doing their part, adding of their supply. And your, your destiny is connected to the local church because your destiny is connected to the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. And let me just remind you, it doesn't really matter what we might be talking about. Whatever the Holy Spirit has quickened us to teach on or to preach on, you will get something even in an area that you might be believing God for. I mean, just because we're talking about this over here, God, the Holy Spirit can deal with you and he can give you a word that applies to something you, oh, how, man, I wouldn't even, he was talking about this, but it applied to my situation over here because you listen and you hear with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And, and so you'll, you'll get something and you're thinking, man, we were talking about this and all of a sudden this came up and, uh, and thank God the Holy Spirit's not limited to what I know. So while we're teaching... And preaching, he can, he can just, man, minister to something that you believe in God for. So uh, I believe we're going to learn something this morning as we continue to talk about. And I just really, I'm not even much in the title. I'm going to stay with this title called The Commission. But we're going to talk about the anointing for, for a few weeks. So, so I'm, I'm going to dive into some stuff. And I won't finish it all this morning. But we're just building on everything that we're talking about. And how many know the, the anointing is important? How many know we don't do anything without the anointing? Jesus didn't do anything without the anointing. I said, Jesus did not do anything without the anointing. And we're not going to accomplish anything without the anointing. So, so uh, let's pray and then we'll look in Exodus, the 40th chapter. Father, we thank you again for your word. The entrance of your word gives light. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for utterance this morning that we'll say and, 
and, and, and, and lives will be changed. Hearts will be open and receptive to hear. And we thank you that we'll learn something that will help us today. We thank you for the anointing that transforms us. It works in us. The anointing's right here in this place upon us to, to even minister the word of God. The anointing is on us to do the will of God that you have for us. And so we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now, in Exodus, the 40th chapter, Moses has been instructed by God to tell the children of Israel uh, to make garments, how to make garments for the priest. So they had to make garments. Everybody say garments. And he told them exactly how he wanted, wanted them to be made. Now, how many of you know the Bible had calls us a kingdom of priests? Revelation says we're a kingdom of priests. Well, back in the Old Testament, the priests were the ones who ministered to the Lord. Uh, the Levitic, they had a priesthood. But now, the Bible says in the New Covenant, we've been made a kingdom of priests. We're ministers to God. How many know you're a minister of God? I said you're a minister, not only of God, but we're called to minister to God. Come on, say, I'm a minister of God. You know what a minister is? A minister, the word minister is, is just a glorified word for servant. So we can say we're servants of God and we serve God. Amen. Uh, you know, every, every good, powerful ministry begins with ministry to Him. You know, if you don't have your own prayer life, if you don't have an, your own life of praise, where you talk to God, your, 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 your ministry life will be real weak and you won't have much fruit. And the fruit's what you get rewarded for. I said your fruit is what you get rewarded for, Amen. what you bear in fruit in this life and prove to be disciples. And so he says here that uh, Moses was instructed... To make garments. So he had to read, he's real. Okay, we're going to make garments for the priest. So they had to gather some things. But anyway, let's pick it up in verse 12. It says, Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doorway of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. In other words, let's clean them up. And you shall put the holy garments. Everybody say, holy garments. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him. Now, that anointing and consecration, that's a separation. So there was holy garments. And he said, you anoint him and you consecrate him that he may minister as a priest to me. How many of you know we've been anointed? How many know we've been consecrated? How many know we as the church, we've been set apart? That's what holy means. The Bible says, you, because I'm, you be holy because I am holy. We have been made holy by the blood. Holiness begins as we grow in, in holiness. Holiness actually comes out of our relationship and our walk with Him. But we're holy. A sanctif to be sanctified means to be set, a set apart for a particular purpose and a use. I'm taking a little more time here. But I'm but I reminded when he says this garment, he's talking about this garment that they put on Aaron, washing them, put on holy garments. You got the picture? They were putting on these holy garments. I mean, if you, if, you, if you could see a picture of the priest today, they were decked out. Breastplate, robe, I mean, turban. I mean, they, they, they had, a, it was pretty, a pretty amazing sight, I'm sure. I'm reminded of Psalm 133, where it says that how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Verse 2 says, it's like precious oil upon the head, coming down upon the beard. He's talking about even Aaron's beard. When they consecrated him, when they anointed him, I mean, when, they, when they, put, they put those clothes on and then just poured oil on him. And he said, it's like the oil coming down up on the edge of his robe. Everybody say robe. So get a picture here. When, they, uh, when, when, when there's a commissioning, when there's a consecration, uh, there, there's an anointing that takes place. And the picture here, so even the Bible says we anoint with oil. That's the symbolic of the Spirit. So the Spirit's at work here. You got the picture here. Now, Keep that in mind. Now go over to Matthew 28. This is where we've been, uh, we've been camping out for the last couple of weeks. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Everybody's familiar. You should be familiar with it. Because this wasn't just a commission for uh, the 12 disciples. Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning in the 16th verse, it says, But the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. How I many you know there's always some doubters in the crowd? Those are the ones you just ignore and go on and say, Bless their darling heart and stupid head. He said, But some were doubtful, and Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Everybody say, All authority. 
How many know if you're submitted to him and you're joint heirs with him, then that same authority has been given to you? When he says all authority has been given to me, basically he's saying I'm giving it to you. All right? Go, therefore, because with the anointing, with the authority, with the power comes responsibility. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you. And no, notice, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So that means the disciples did not outlive uh, this, what we call the end of the age. We're right now at the end of the age. I mean, we're wrapping this thing up. So this same commission applies to us today as the local church, all right? Or any church, any, any believer, you're, you have a part, your, your ultimate destiny, your, the will of God for your life is attached to this commission right here. What are you doing to help it? What are you doing to be involved with it? Are you here? So think about it. He says, make disciples, teaching them. Now, Mark, Mark's gospel, he uses the word preach. Going, to the world, going all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples. So uh, the preaching of the gospel saves. Preaching inspires. Preaching saves. Teaching is the discipleship part of it. All right, it's the, it's the making of disciples. Now, let me just say something about a disciple. A disciple is one who is joined to somebody else. What do you mean joined? Disciple, the disciples were joined to Jesus. They followed him everywhere they went. The Bible says in John 8, 31 and 32, if you continue in my word, if you want to be his disciples, it begins, number one, you continue in the word. If you continue in the word, you're truly my disciples and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So a disciple is one who is joined to somebody else. It's like an apprentice in the natural. If you want to learn something, if you see somebody that's doing something that you want to learn how to do it, then get, get with them. Find out how they do it. You know, it's like if somebody's a carpet layer and you want to lay carpet, you got to go work for a carpet guy. If you want to learn how to be a good painter, go find you a good painter and work for the painter. If you want, I mean, they used to, in trades, that's how they, they, they raise up people that know how to do certain trades. And if you want to be a good bricklayer, then you go work for a bricklayer. If you want to learn how to be a printer, come work for Mike. He's, he runs a printing company. He can teach you how to print it, all, everything you need to know about printers. All right? Ministry, if you want to be in the ministry, if you want to learn how to be a good minister, you got to get around the ministry. And you got to stay around the ministry. Yeah, but they don't, they, they, they're not letting me do what I want to do. That's not the why you're there. Because you're going to be challenged to do things you don't want to do. And your heart's going to get challenged. And your attitude's going to get challenged. And by the way, if you're getting a paycheck from somebody else, you forfeit the right to have a bad attitude. Okay, just moving right along. I just thought I'd throw that one out there for you. So it's like, in a, you know, part of the Great Commission is for us to go and make disciples. And the bottom line is if we're not careful, we can let that slip. That's why I talked to you last week about Joshua and the children of Israel. And the people stopped serving the Lord because they got away from the responsibility and quit having an enemy because they quit. They didn't possess all the land. They didn't possess all the land until David came along 500 years later. And so you have to stick with the vision. The goal is to fulfill the plan of God. All right. Now, discipleship, again, that takes contact. It takes one-on-one. -on -one. It takes walking with people, looking at what they do, praying with people. If you want to learn how to pray, get around people that pray. We pray uh, usually at least two, two Wednesday night. We'll be praying tonight, 5 o'clock. You want to learn how to pray? Get around people that pray. Whatever you want to learn how, you find somebody that does it good and get around them. Learn about it. All right, that's, just, that's, that's a picture of, of discipleship. And again, the majority are going to fall in the area of being discipled. Not everybody is the discipler, but we're all, in a, in a sense, under him. We're disciples, all right? So we're going to talk about the anointing in connection with uh, this responsibility, and we're going to look maybe uh, in, the, in the aspect or from the, from the side of clothes. Everybody say clothes, because he talked about Aaron's, Aaron's robe and the garments. So we're, we're going to look at this in the context of clothing. The Old Testament uses uh, phrases like mantles, garments, cloaks. Next week, we'll, we'll probably uh, talk about Elijah and Elisha and look at some things there. But the Bible has a lot to say about clothes and garments and mantles because they're types of things. They're types of the anointing. Uh, you know, when it comes to gifts, the Bible says we've all been given gifts. Those giftings, those graces are anointings. 
Whatever you, that's why the, your, your, you know, your assignment and destiny and the will of God for your life is tied to the giftings that God has given you, those things that he calls you to do. Whatever he, you know, that's why, that's why it, it's about discovering what it is that he, he's called you to do. And if you can get in the will of God, you will flourish if you'll develop yourself and work with it and believe God. Amen. Now, think about this when it comes to different clothing. The Bible has a ton. I mean, we could, we could go a seminar all, all day about clothes. But think about this. The Lord wears clothes. The Lord wears clothes. He, he wears, the Bible says he wears clothes of majesty. He's clothed, the Bible says he's clothed with strength and honor. He puts on clothes, he puts on light like a garment. We're talking about God now. He puts on light like a garment. The Bible says that he dresses in glory. Come on, he, he dresses in glory clouds. Somebody said, you looking kind of flashy today. Yeah, I look like my father. He dresses in glory. Amen. Think about it. Men are clothed, the Bible says, with salvation. Clothed with righteousness. Clothed with armor. The Bible talks about, I, I like the war horse over in Job. Anybody ever read about the war horse? Job says his neck is clothed with thunder. Think about it. Even Jesus named a couple of his disciples sons of thunder. Think about that. I mean, they went into Samaria at one point, and, and they, they were kind of rejecting the message, and, and they went back to Jesus and said, Lord, uh, can we just call fire down on them? Sons of thunder. The Lord said, no, you're not, you're not real aware of what spirit you're He said, I didn't come to destroy people. I, I mean, but they were thinking about Elijah, and he called down fire. He said, I came, to, I came to help people. We're not here to wipe people off the planet here. But thunder. Everybody say thunder. Clothed with thunder. Listen, when you're clothed with thunder, you shake the devil up. Amen. I say, when you're clothed with thunder, you'll shake the devil up. Amen. Woo, Amen. He hears thunder when you speak the name of Jesus. You're like, what? When you know how to lift up a shout of praise. You, you, you got that voice of a conqueror. Uh, he hears thunder. You understand? I mean, when Jesus was raised up, I mean, there was nothing but thunder. Woo! The Bible talks about garments of vengeance and cloaks of zeal. Over in Isaiah, I really like this. In Isaiah 59, verse 17, just listen, I got on the screen for you. It says, and he put on righteousness like a breastplate. How I many know oh, that is our breastplate? We have a breastplate of righteousness. And he put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. How I many know oh, that's part of our armor? And he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself with a zeal as a mantle. Now, when I'm talking about vengeance, I'm talking about vengeance against the devil and his works. Amen. Amen. Against him. You can't be passive about what the devil is doing. He's your enemy. How many know you have an adversary, the devil? How many know you lift up the shield of faith against him? How many know you have to resist him? I mean, he, come on, you can't be passive about your enemy. He's a thief. He comes to, he torments minds. He puts diseases on people. Come on, I mean, he just, I mean, he messes with little kids. He has no mercy. He's merciless. He's heartless. He's a thief. He's a liar. He's a stealer. He's a killer. He tears marriages apart. He condemns. And you can't be passive about him. A lot of people are like, well, I guess if I ignore him, maybe he'll leave me alone. No, he is going to tear you up. Especially if you call yourself a child of God. You're on, you're on, so you, you can't be passive. You've got to put on vengeance like a garment. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I think it's Ecclesiastes 7, it says oppression makes a wise man mad. Sometimes you've got to get mad. It's okay to get mad at the devil. Amen. Say, no, you don't, devil. Take your hands off my money. Take your hands off my kids. It, you will go no further right here. Not going to get depressed, not going to get down. No more chains. Sometimes you just got to say, no more. Amen. Are you here this morning? Yeah. And so I said, it's good to get mad at the devil sometimes. Yeah. Don't you get mad. Put on that garment like a, put on garment like a, vengeance like a garment. Zeal, like a mantle. Think about it. The Bible talks about being clothed with strength and honor. Everybody say strength and honor. Come on, we're clothed with strength and honor. Being, talks about being clothed with fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. It talks about white robes, bright clothes, gold clothes, silk and purple clothes. I like purple. Anybody like purple? Amen. Amen. Wedding garments. 
Garments of praise. Anybody put on your garment of praise this morning? Come on, what does that represent? That represents an anointing. There's something about when you begin to praise, man, the anointing destroys the yoke. Man, you get, every, you get everybody in here just praising God. Put on, their, put on, look around and see if somebody got their clothes on this morning. Everybody got their garment of praise on. Woo! Got clothed with thunder. Got some vengeance. Woo! Anybody getting lifted a little bit here this morning? Come on, we're talking about anointings now. Clothing for us. Garments of praise, beautiful garments. Garments that smell good. You don't want any garments that stink, right? I mean, if you're wearing yesterday's clothes and ain't been to the cleaners yet, or you went and sweated in it, come on, don't put it back on. You wearing last week's underwear, uh uh-uh. All right, garment, everybody say garments. A lot of different clothing that's mentioned in the Bible. Clothes that that didn't wear out. Shoes that didn't wear out. How many know God knows how to make your stuff last? Come on. <laughs> Amen. The Bible talks about clothing that people spread. People spread their garments before Jesus as he came in, you know, riding in. Laid their, laid their garments for him to walk on. Jesus took off his clothes, washed the disciples' feet. The woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in, touched the hem of Jesus' garment, touched the hem of his clothes. I mean, something can happen with the right clothes. Amen. Because something, something's in them. Something's on you. Hallelujah. Did you ever notice that, demon, that the demoniac wore no clothes? He didn't have any clothes on. He was running around naked. That's a clue. The devil wants to strip all your clothes off of you because they're all typical of anointings and distributions. God wants you to have your clothes on. Look at your neighbor and say, make sure your clothes are on. Now, there's, there's several instances in the Bible that deal with mantles and their transfer. Now, why are we talking about this? Well, the Holy Spirit wants you to learn something. There, you know, there's a doctrine in the church, Hebrews uh, 6, that talks about the doctrine of the laying on of hands. You know, there's a lot of things that are transferred through the laying on of hands. The Bible says you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. When people are commissioned, hands are laid on them. Paul laid his hands on Timothy. There's a lot of, a lot of things when they, Pablo was talking about Acts chapter 6, when they, took the, they, they laid their hands on him. You know, you lay hands on people to get them filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't need hands to lay it on you to get saved, but sometimes to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you get hands laid on you. Because why? There's a transmission. There's a tangible anointing. There's something that's transferred. And you're all called to be a conduit. We're all called to transfer the Spirit. That's part of why he said you could lay hands on the sick and they would recover. These signs shall follow them that believe. Not if you're a pastor or a teacher or an evangelist. You can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So get bold with what you have. You got a garment of, you have garments, you have anointings. All right? Are you here this morning? So we're going to look at at least three. Again, I can't get to all of them this morning. Just I got just a few minutes left. This won't take us long. But go to Numbers chapter 11. Let's just look at three quick ones. They're all in the book of Numbers. So we'll just do a little number run right here. Numbers chapter 11. And in Numbers chapter 11, we see Moses, I like this, again, I'm I'm just amazed at how the Lord's directing us, because he's right on, right on. Man, sometimes, I I mean, because I, sometimes I get, really get to struggling if I'm on something, because I'm praying, I'm saying, Lord, is this what you want us, and and all of a sudden I get back to something, I'm like, ooh, man, this is perfect, this lines right up with what we're doing. So right here in Numbers chapter 11, we see Moses, he's trying to do everything by himself, and he's getting really frustrated. Matter of fact, it's really funny. If you want a good laugh, you just read right here in Numbers chapter 11 because Moses begins to talk to God. And he said, Lord, why why are you, he said, he said, why are you putting all this on me? He said, I didn't ask for this. I, why are you asking me to carry all this people in my bosom? He said, he said, Lord, you, you might have to do something here. He said, I can't do all of it. All right. He said, and, and his father-in-law actually told him, he said, yeah, he went to his father-in-law about it. And the father-in-law said, uh, Jethro said, yeah, that's not a good thing. And so in verse 16, listen to what it says. The Lord therefore said to Moses, Gather for me 70 men from the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and their officers. Bring them to the tent of meeting and let them take their stand there with you. Then I will come down and speak with you there. Notice there's a transfer that's going to take place right here. And I will take of the Spirit who is upon you, and I'm going to put it on them. 
I'm going to take of the Spirit. See, Moses had something. What Moses was doing, he was not doing it in the natural. And you'll never do what God's called you to do just by the natural because you got good looks or you, got, you know how to speak or, or you not have enough knowledge. It will never be enough. It will always, whatever God tells you to do, I don't care if he's called you to work in the nursery or work in the, in the preschool or work in the elementary or in our J-12 ministry or youth or adults or whatever you're doing, you will have to lean on him. You will have to believe in the anointing that's upon you to carry it out that's why jesus daily spent time with the father because he said apart from me he said i, I can't do I only, I only do what i see the father do i only say what i see the father say and jesus said apart from me you can do nothing so we have to depend on that relationship right and so he said here I'll take of the Spirit that's upon you, and I'll put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you so that you don't have to bear it. It was, it, was, it, was, it was wearing on Moses, and he said, you don't have to bear all the burden because, listen, there's too much to do, so I'm going, we're going to spread this thing out here a little bit. Look at verse 25. It says, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and he took the Spirit who was upon him, and placed him upon the 70 elders, and it came about that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. Now, it's interesting. It doesn't tell us that, that Moses laid his hands on them, but I'm convinced Moses laid his hands on all 70 of those people. God took of that Spirit, and it rested upon and they prophesied. It's you know, you prophesy by the Spirit. So God took of that spirit that was on Moses and put it on them. Again, I just as you look at this, just remind you, no one person can do it all. When it comes to the church, fulfilling the Great Commission, no one person can do it all. That's why God has distributed things to the body. He gives gifts. He doesn't give one man all the gifts of the Spirit. It's distributed across the body, all right? And there's different things, different responsibilities, different giftings that we're going to have. And that's why sometimes it's discovering what it is that I'm called to do, where I fit, and get happy about it. Be glad about it, all right? But it takes all of us to accomplish God's plan, and it's done by the Spirit. All right, let's go to the second one. Go over to Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20, that was one example. Here's another example. I like this one. This is kind of a nice little story. This will help you. Numbers chapter 20, verse 22, it says, Now when they set out from Kadesh, the sons of Israel, the whole congregation, came to Mount Hor. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered to his people. In other words, Aaron's fixing to die. He's going to be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land which I've given to the sons of Israel, because you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and his son Eliezer. Now watch this. And bring them up. Everybody say they're going up. Bring them up to Mount Hor and strip Aaron of his garments and put them on his son Eliezer so that Aaron will be gathered to his people and he's going to die there. Verse 28. And after Moses had stripped Aaron of his garments, put them on his son Eliezer, Aaron died there on the mountaintop. Now notice there's a transfer that's taking place right here. Eliezer now becomes the high priest. Now this is symbolic of what happened in the spirit. The anointing goes from Aaron to Eliezer, the high priest. But the interesting thing here is you've noticed God called him up. This, this is a glorious time. This is not a sad time. I mean, you know, sometimes in death people think, well, this is sad. But, but God, uh, number one, you don't step down when you leave this life. Aaron was just getting his next promotion. If you know anybody, maybe he's passed away recently. They got promoted. All right? Now, Eliezer, if you think about it, Eliezer, he's been preparing for this probably who knows how long his life. And it, when it comes time, Aaron, if you just put yourself in this picture, Aaron is taking off his turban, takes it off, takes off the breastplate, takes off his girdle, all of his priestly clothes, takes it all off, and Aaron's left naked. He's just standing there with all he, you know. <laughs> he's just standing there. And how many know the Bible says that's the way you came in? And that's the way he's going out. And then he think about it. Then Aaron probably speaks a final word to his son, kisses him, gives up the ghost. 
goes on. And the anointing, and of course, and in, in, in Moses puts the garments upon Eliezer, anoints him. The anointing comes upon Eliezer and the responsibility of that place. See, again, with anointing comes responsibility. Everybody say resp- responsibility. So he assumes his place. They go back down. So you see a picture here. Again, you see something. There's a transfer taking place. Those garments. Now let's go to the third one, and we'll finish right here. Go over to uh, Numbers, I believe it's the 27th chapter. Numbers 27. Everybody say, thank God for the anointing. Now here in Numbers, Moses had 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 an assistant, had a young assistant. His name was Joshua. Anybody ever see the Ten Commandments, you know? Moses the leader, Joshua's running around, doing this, doing that. That's a lot of what what disciples are. All right? Joshua had been faithful to Moses for a lot of years. Look in verse 15. It says, Numbers 27, verse 15. It says, Then Moses spoke to the Lord, saying, now, Now listen to his heart. He said, May the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation. In other words, Moses realizes, Okay, Aaron's gone. It's about time for me to go too. Appoint a man over the congregation who will go out and come in before them and who will lead them out and bring them in. That the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hands on him. See, again, you see it right there. Everybody say, lay your hands on him. He said, lay your hands on him and have him stand before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation. In other words, you're going to do this thing publicly and commission him in their sight and you shall put some of your authority on another, or actually the Hebrew literally says that you'll take of your authority, you'll take of what's on and put it on him. You say, well, if God wanted to do it, why didn't he just do it? Because God works through authority. I said God works through authority. And so, there's a doctrine when there's things. It's just the way God operates. He has ways of doing it. He said, and you lay your hands on him, and you put him before all the people, and you commission him in their sight, put some of your authority on him, in order that all the congregation of the sons of Israel may obey him. And then in the 23rd verse, it says, then he laid his hands on him and commissioned him, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Now, the reason one of the things I'm talking about this is because so many times when people think of the anointing or the anointings and mantles, they think of glory. Ooh. Wow. I mean, how many of you think of that? When you think, when you just, come on, just your natural mind, when you think of anointing, you think of something like, oh, I don't have that. No, you should think, I have, I'm anointed. Christ means the anointed one, and if you're a Christian, you just, you, you're, you're anointed too. That's what a Christian is. We're anointed. We've been anointed for a purpose. So, I mean, when times we think of, we think of uh, something glorious or something way out there, something we might not have, but that, this was more of a charge to responsibility. So again, if God is, think about it like this, if God has commissioned the church And he says, all authority and power has been given to me. You've got my name. You've got the word. You've got the spirit. You've got, I mean, we don't lack anything that the early church had. We've got everything that they had, but with it comes responsibility. Why have we been given it? Anytime you delegate a responsibility to somebody, you give them the means, the authority, the ability to do it. If you don't give them the ability, the means, the authority to do it, then why give them the responsibility to do it? So with that, all of a sudden, here's this deal. Here we see, with this charge, with the commission, comes responsibility. Do we have a responsibility? What if the church doesn't do its job? Well, then it just doesn't go anywhere. Never uh, never completes the assignment. That's not a good thing. That's not a good picture, right? So you can just feel like this. If you're taking notes, just write this down. I'm closing. The greater the mantle or anointing, the greater the responsibility. The greater the anointing, the greater the responsibility. 
So, but again, I want you to keep this in mind. In Deuteronomy 34, if you go over there, it's when, when Moses knew it was time for him to go, think about this. In Deuteronomy 34, it says that Moses was 120. At the age of 120, God calls him up. I mean, at 120, he's climbing a mountain. And the Bible says his eye was not dim. Come on, at 120, he's seeing good. He's hearing good. He's climbing a mountain. And he's going up. He's going to die. All right? But it says in the ninth verse, now Joshua... The son of Nun was filled with the spirit of wisdom. So what happened when Moses put his hands upon him? Took some of that authority. And watch this. What happened when Moses put his hands upon him and, and put some of that authority on him? There was a spirit of wisdom that came with it. How many know if you got responsibility, you need some wisdom to go with the responsibility? I mean, that's what Solomon said when, when the Lord came to him in a dream and said, uh, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And, and Solomon said, I, I, I want wisdom. To know how to lead for, you know, wisdom. Wisdom's a good thing. The Bible says over in James chapter 1 that if you lack wisdom, you could ask of God who gives liberally and it'll be given. That's one thing I say. You know, you don't ask God for faith. He said faith comes by hearing. You get faith by, by hearing the word and staying in the word and building your faith. God gives every man a measure of faith. You develop that. But there's one area right there. He said you could ask for wisdom. So I ask for wisdom. I know the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. So he said... When, when Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, it said, For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the sons of Israel listened to him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. So again, you know, what I'm just trying to help you see this morning, and, and we'll get into some more of this. We'll talk about Elijah and, and, and Elisha and look at a few things, and, and we'll talk about the ultimate mantle, and we'll look at some of these things. But, um, but I just want you to understand this morning, uh, as, the, as a body, as the church, um, there's something available to every single one of us. And Paul said we could pray for it. In Ephesians 1, he said pray to the Lord. He, he was praying for the church there that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. They would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of their understanding enlightened. We would know the hope of his calling. So you ought to pray that on a regular basis. There's a spirit of wisdom and revelation over in Colossians 1. It says he, he prayed, there's another prayer there, that God would fill us with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding that we might walk in a manner worthy of him. Those are two main prayers that you ought to be praying over your life every day. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Colossians 1, Philippians 1. Those are Holy Spirit-inspired prayers that you can pray, personalize them, put them over your life. But I'm telling you this morning, I'm encouraging you because why? As we, as a body, as we're moving in the vision and the plan of God, as we're, as we're taking hold of our responsibility, we have an anointing to carry it out. Listen, you're anointed to do what God's called you to do. You're anointed to serve. You're anointed to live. You're anointed to be a blessing. Amen. Did you learn something this morning? Amen. We'll get into some more of these things. I'm just building here. So, we'll just unhook the caboose right here, pick it up next week because I'm out of time. Amen. How many of you learned something this morning? Amen. Everybody say, I got some clothes. Think about it. It's like this. How many of you, how many of you got closets at home, got clothes, in, got clothes in the closets? You know, and there's seasonal clothes, winter clothes, summer clothes. You got, how, many, how many of you got some of those clothes in there, your favorites? I mean, some of you ladies, it's your favorite dress. I can't wear this one yet. I just wore it like three weeks ago. I can't wear it yet. There's things like that. You, you're, you, your spirit, our spiritual closet is full of clothing that God has provided for us. And it's all connected. It's all related to the anointing that he has for us to do what he's called us to do. Amen. You're anointed this morning. So get ready. I said get ready to use it. That's what it's for. Be responsible with it. Be ready to use it. Amen. Father, thank you for the word this morning. We just thank you that you're leading us, you're guiding us. Oh, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. You're directing our steps. You said a good man's steps would be ordered of the Lord. And so we just thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you that we're, we're, there's not one insignificant part or person in the body of Christ. But you've designed us. You are, you're the one who gives us the designer life. We are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You have plans and paths that you've already prepared ahead of time for us to walk in, live in the good life. And so we thank you. Lord, I thank you for the people today. 
Lord, I'm just encouraging them, Lord, that we'll, we'll put on all, we'll, we'll access every garment that you have for us. Garment of praise. Lord, things for ministry. Ministry mantles. Garments that you have for us. And we just thank you that we're anointed. And that anointing destroys yokes of bondage. It removes burdens. Hallelujah. We thank you that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you're doing things in our midst, even in these last days. And it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. Hallelujah. So, Lord, help us to be spirit conscious. It's not about how much we know. It's not about what we look like. It's not about how much money we have or what we don't have. Lord, it's just about stepping in and fulfilling your assignment that you have for our life. And we'll be obedient because we're your servants. And so we thank you for it this morning. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. While every head's bowed and every eye closed, we always like to give an invitation. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'll tell you what, it's the most important decision that you could ever make. And if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm not sure right now if I was to die, uh, just like Eliezer did or Moses did when it's that time. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if I'd go to heaven. Well, right now it's important that you know that you're born again. That if Jesus was to call the church right now, rapture the church, you'd be on your way. It's important to know that. And if you're not sure this morning, we'd like to pray with you. Give you that opportunity. If that's you, you say, Pastor, would you include me in this prayer? Lift up your hand real high this morning. Pastor, would you pray for me? I'd like to make Jesus the Lord of my life. There's one right there. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. Anybody else? Maybe you've, uh, maybe you've just slipped away. You've been born again before, but you've slipped out of fellowship. Kind of like the prodigal son. Kind of life has a way of jerking the rug out of you and you kind of get lost and and you just know that's that you need to get your heart right with God today and you want to come home if that's you lift up your hand real high we'll include you in this prayer to anybody else God bless you sir anybody else God bless you sir anyone else I need to get my heart right with Jesus God bless you I see that hand back there anyone else thank you Lord now we're going to do one more one more invitation this morning for salvation, rededication, here's one more this morning. We're talking about the Spirit. We're talking about the anointing. You've, if you've never been filled with the Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and you'd like to be filled with the Spirit, have that prayer language and be filled. That's a, it's another experience to salvation. And it comes many times by the laying on of hands. You know, over the book of Acts, when Philip, Stephen, went to Samaria and began to preach Christ, he says, and then there was joy in the city, miracles were taking place. But they sent for Peter and John to come down and, and lay their hands on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Well, they had been saved, but they hadn't received the Holy Spirit. And if you've never received the Holy Spirit with the, the evidence of speaking other tongues and you'd like to be filled this morning, lift up your hand. Raha, we'll include you in this prayer. Anybody like that this morning? Pastor, I want to be filled. God bless you. I see that hand. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Pastor, pray for me. I want to be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. I know there's several of you. You know, it's not anything to be uh, afraid of. I got filled with the Holy Spirit in 1985 on a Methodist mission trip in Cap Haitian, Haiti. Something God was working with me in my life, taking me to a whole nother level. And, and that's just one way that God, I mean, I tell you what, the scriptures began to come more alive to me. Sometimes if you're going through a struggle in life, if you're not filled with the Spirit, you need to be. Part of the, the benefits and the blessings of being filled with the Spirit. Paul said, he that speaks in an unknown tongue gives thanks well. He says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries unto God. God wants you to be able to pray out your future, pray out things and mysteries to God. Another, he said there in, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. So, I mean, if you have an op it's like charging up a battery, the Greek said, like a literal charging that takes place when you're praying in the Holy Ghost because there's spiritual things taking place. So if you'd like to be filled and you've never been filled before, anybody like that, this one, lift up your hand real high. God bless you, man. Anyone else? Hallelujah. All right, here's what we're going to do. We've got trained people to pray for you. So I'm going to ask you to do something right quick. If you raise your hand to be saved or to rededicate your life and you want to be filled with the Spirit, just come up here up front. Come up here. I'm going to pray for you right here. Come on down right up here. Come on, be bold. Step up out of your seat. Come on down. Come on, give me Just stand right over here. Stand on this purple stripe right here. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. We get some people saved, rededicated, filled. Come on. Hallelujah. Sometimes I got to go fishing. I see hands go up. I'm going to pull on you. Come on up. It's all right. Get everything that you need to get. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on up. 
Everybody say, praise the Lord. Remember, everything when it comes to salvation, receiving, getting your heart right with God, or even to be filled with the Spirit. If I was going to give you my Bible, what would you have to do? You'd have to take it, receive it. Even when it comes to being filled with the Spirit, it's a gift. The Bible talks about, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. What do you do with a gift? You receive it. All right? And you have some people right behind you. We're going to pray for you. And then we have a place of prayer. They're going to go with you and show you just a few things in the Word. Make sure that you're going to get specifically what you're coming for. And if you want to be filled with the Spirit, they're going to just show you exactly. And just lay hands on you. And you'll get filled. Or however they're going to do that. All right? Father, I thank you. Stretch your hands, church. Father, I thank you for these that have come up here, Lord. They've come to receive the free gift. Hallelujah. Of salvation and the Holy Spirit. All that comes with it. Lord, we just thank you right now. They'll never be the same in Jesus' name. October 19th, Lord, salvation was made free and available to them. And they took it and they ran with it. And the Holy Ghost running with him in their life. And Lord, I just thank you for the clothing. Lord, the supernatural giftings that comes along with what you've given for us. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Now turn around and meet these people right behind you right here. They're trained to work with you, pray with you. Hallelujah. Amen. There, your friend. All right. Look to your right, your left, my left, right. This fellow is You're going to follow him. We've got a place of prayer for you. It won't take long. Amen. You'll be done. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know what's just as beautiful? What's just as awesome as the sight of all these people coming up is all the people going with them to pray. Woo, see, because I can't do it all. Hey, man, I, man, I got to, all right, bye, bye, I got to go pray with all these people. But you got people that work with it, help us in all these different areas. That's a wonderful sight. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. People that know what they're doing. Hallelujah. What'd you get something this morning? Everybody say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Say, I'm blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of you got a scripture? Get a scripture in your heart right now. How many got a verse in you know a verse? Something in the Bible other than Jesus wept. Or John 3 16. You know a verse, you got something in the Bible? Whatever you got, now whatever, think about it. Now just begin to thank God for it. Thank it is working in your life. Come on, thank Him for it. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes I'm healed. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, 4. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes I'm healed. It's so important that you're taking the word of God. Put it in your mouth and begin to thank God for it and that it's activated, it's operating in your life. Amen. Activate. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. More importantly, what's coming out of your mouth makes all the difference. Amen. Well, bless you guys. Miss Denise has just a few announcements and you'll be dismissed. Bless you. Amen. Well, we are anointed. Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. And as you do, I want to remind you about the immersion training that does start tomorrow night. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We do still have Wednesday night service at 7 o'clock, so go ahead and come back for that. And please support the women's ministry on your way out the door and buy a burrito for lunch. Buy a burrito for your neighbor. Buy a burrito for your dog. Just buy a burrito before you leave this morning. Amen. You are dismissed.